Good afternoon. In last class, we were learning introduction to digital signal processing and what is signal, classification of signals, different types of systems, characteristics of systems, something about analog and digital and discrete signal, linearity property of the systems, causal non-causal kind of systems as well as signals. Here today, we will complete important topic. I have introduced yesterday and that is about sampling. So sampling of analog signal is the main topic of today's class and after this I will take two more properties of signaling system of LTA system that will be time invariant and time variant as well as static versus dynamic system properties. So I will start from the sampling of analog signals today and as I said earlier that this is one of the most important topic of communication engineering or you can say signal processing engineering. Sampling like it resembles the pronunciation of this word that uh, it is something, something about samples of some kind of things and that is what analog signal. So sample of analog, the method to convert a continuous uniform, a continuous signal into sample version or discrete version of that. So a signal like this can be called as a continuous, it is a continuous signal. Suppose it is a reference this time. Now the same can be converted into the discrete format with reference n by sampling phenomenon or sampling process. If we can multiply this given input signal with let it be x of t and suppose this is dad of t dad here is nothing but impulse signal so a train of impulse so single impulse can be represented by del t the train of impulse can be represented by del t minus t naught minus t1 minus t2 and as we have learned in last class that negative means what shifted version of signals towards right hand side or we can say delayed version of the signals. So if it is del of t, del, del t minus t naught or t1 may be here, t2 may be at this position and t3 may be here at this position and so on up to infinity. So we have a train of impulses, we have a signal here. If we will multiply these two signals, we will get some of this kind of response. So I can write an equation from here that del T S multiplied with x of t will result in some suppose it is g of t. Now there is an important point that now signal is not continuous, so I can write it here discrete form g of nt and is the sample position is what zero position first second third so it's a rough example it's not exactly it's not exactly mathematically correct it's just a indication that how can we convert a continuous signal into discrete format and this process is applicable this we can apply to any given continuous signal if we can recover original signal from converted signal what I am going to say we can apply sampling process to a continuous signal only if we can recover or reconstruct original signal from the converted signal otherwise it is a vestige of signal information so if we are not able to recover reconstruct original signal from the converted signal then there is a no meaning we are, lo we are also our information. So the mandatory condition is that we must be able to recover our original signal from converted signal. Alright. So there are certain mathematical constraints whether we will be able to get our signal back from the converted form or not. And those mathematical constraints come under the sampling theorem. There was a gentleman, Mr. Nyquist. So he found, first of all, uh, he found out some criteria, uh, certain conditions, certain limits, 
we define those limits that if we follow those limits, we will always be able to recover, reconstruct our signal. And uh, that criteria is known as the Nyquist theorem or Nyquist criteria of sampling. Today we, will, we are going to learn that. We will prove it mathematically. The Nyquist theorem states that if the Nyquist theorem states that if the sampling frequency, the rate of sampling, sampling frequency is greater than or equal to twice of maximum frequency content of original signal then we will be able to recover our original signal from the converted signal what I mean to say fs is the rate of sampling rate of sampling fm is the highest frequency f max highest frequency content of original signal ok if we can maintain while applying sampling process if we can maintain the rate of sampling or the sampling frequency always greater than or at least equal to twice fm then we will be able to reconstruct a signal what I mean to say suppose we have a signal x of t is equal to 2 cos 20t or let me make it more easy 25 so we can compare if suppose this is our signal then we need to check whether we can uh, the signal uh, what should be the ideal or exact uh, appropriate sampling frequency for this signal then what we need to do is that we need to find out the highest frequency content of this signal so I will compare this signal with the standard form that is 2 cos omega t omega is the part here so omega is basically we know that it is nothing but frequencies representation only omega is equal to 2 pi f and here the given value is 20 pi so you can compare these things it is equal to 20 pi so if you cancel these things it is 10 f is equal to 10 so the frequency content of this signal is 10 so I can mark here that this is what the frequency content of the signal so the sampling frequency must be at least 10 or greater than that so fs must be at least greater than equal to or greater than 10 then only we can reconstruct signal this is what the Nyquist criteria now we will prove it mathematically whether this condition is applicable or not and how they can say that this is a valid theorem we will prove it mathematically now Nyquist theorem or sampling theorem. Okay. Let me take some random example. Suppose there is a signal kind of as t zero t. Okay, this is one signal. Some any signal, continuous signal. The frequency conversion of this signal is supposed somewhat frequency domain representation is this one so I will write, I can write it like x omega as I said in a frequency domain, we always use capital letters. So add capital X of omega, this is small x of t, continuous signal. Now there is a train of pulses, impulses, okay. Suppose we have a system which is known as a multiplier. where we can apply two input as t and n of t where t s is the interval 
between continuous or consecutive samples. TS is the interval, which is actually you can call time gap between two samples. So del T is del T is is a continuous train of pulses. X T is always a single multiplier. If you will apply this del T and X T input, it will multiply them and will produce some output that is known as a GT. Now this is what a train of pulse. So we can represent this with uh, we can represent its Fourier transform format. Before that, uh, I can write it here. Uh, still, uh, this thing is in frequency normal, so I will use small g. So, small gt is equal to x t del t s. The frequency domain variant of this will be g g omega as per the Fourier transform we will learn or you have already learned in your signal system uh, multiplication in time domain is equal to convolution in frequency domain and convolution in frequency domain is equal to multiplication in time domain vice versa so g omega is equal to x omega del omega the Fourier of this cell Fourier of del t so we can represent things like this only. This equation represents this mathematical operation. I will expand this. I will write the complete value of gt del t now, and we will solve and we will see that what happens to this equation. Keep in mind that uh, this side gt small gt is nothing but the continuous uh, pulses of unit magnitude. And this is the frequency domain representation of same signal. What I mean to say, if you will take the Fourier transform of x of t, you are going to get this thing. Okay? It means what? There is upper and lower limit of uh, frequency. This side is upper limit. This side is the lower limit of bandwidth. You can say. So you see the gap between this point and this point is exactly twice that. So that is the bandwidth of this signal. So this is a band limited signal. Okay, this is a band limited signal. We know that what is the highest content of frequency in this signal. It is a band limited signal. Alright. Now, we can write it here that xt is this signal, del t is this one. So, I can write here that uh, del t is the frequency domain presentation of del t is will be equal to 1 upon t is 1 plus twice cos omega s t plus twice cos 2 omega s t plus twice cos 3 omega s t plus this is the Fourier series representation of this signal you can uh, check it again at your home we will not cover it here we are supposed to understand that this is the Fourier representation, Fourier series representation of given signal, continuous train of pulses within it. The Fourier series representation will be like this. Okay. So we can say that the Fourier series representation is there. We have always a signal here xt. So xt del ts. So I can say that x of t del ts will be equal to multiplication of these two things and it will make it equal to 1 upon ts x of t plus 2 x of t cos omega s t plus 2 x of t cos 2 omega s t plus x of t twice of x t cos 3 omega s t plus and so on. So this is the product of x t g t. We have you see, we are getting this value after Fourier series uh, method. This is a Fourier series version of this signal. Uh, if, you, if you will multiply these two things, you will get this signal. Now we can find out the frequency domain representation of this signal. So I will uh, erase this waveform. We have limited space here. So I can write it here that uh, you see, we have an expression here twice x of t cos omega s t 
okay, two x t cos omega s t. The frequency domain representation of this signal we can calculate using the property of shifting because cos omega s t is nothing but e to the power cos omega s t is nothing but e to the power j omega s t plus e to the power minus j omega s t by two. So this two will get cancelled with this. You have x of t this side. You can multiply this with the internal parts. What you will get? X t multiplied with e to the power j omega s t. With that, you will get x t multiplied with e to the power minus j omega s t. Simple mathematics. We all understand these things. I hope. Okay. So this is nothing but you see here in time domain if you are multiplying a signal with exponent t to the power j omega s t it means in frequency domain as per the property of Fourier transform in frequency domain we are actually shifting this original signal with omega s frequency and here in this case we are shifting but in other direction here it is negative here it is positive j plus j minus j so the resultant content of this equation will be if if Frequency or Fourier representation of x t is x of omega. The Fourier representation of this equation, Fourier representation of this equation will become using this understanding. It will become or will look like x omega minus omega s plus s omega plus omega s. Okay. Let it be more clear. All right. Is it all right? Okay. So uh, x omega minus omega s plus x omega plus omega s. This is the calculation for cos omega s t. If suppose we have two omega s t here, this will become twice here and two there. If it is three here, this will become three here and three there, and so on. So you see here in this equation, we have one upon t s x t only plus twice of x t cos omega s t plus twice of x t cos two omega s t plus Twice of x t cos t omega s t. So the frequency domain conversion of this uh, equation, after applying this method, this shifting property, it will look like somewhat. Uh, what I will write now: one upon t s outside x of omega plus x of omega minus omega s plus x of omega plus omega s. Plus x of omega minus twice omega s plus x of omega plus twice omega s plus I can write x of omega minus three omega s plus x of omega minus sorry omega plus three omega s. So. So this equation represents nothing but the Fourier transformation of the same equation, which is which was actually the product of uh, given signal and trained pulses. So now we have frequency domain version of the signal. We can plot a graphical presentation for the same uh, equation. Before that, I can uh, write this giant equation in a generalized form. This is infinite long equation. So we can make it a uh, little more computable and specific. So I can write uh, equation for x like x omega minus n. Omega s, where n can be minus two plus infinity. All right, very simple. N can be minus two plus infinity. You put the values here, you will get all these possible values. Okay. With that, one upon t s outside. That is nothing but the time interval. So this is not nothing but your original signal. I can say the product uh, the. Outcome of the multiplication, outcome of the multiplication of this with uh, impulse train, and I can write it here G omega. Now you see the Fourier conversion or spectrum uh, graph is for x omega is like this, which is actually frequency domain representation of x of t. Then Fourier conversion of this signal will look like repetition of the same shape many times. You see this was for this part. You have n omega. This is x omega. You have x omega minus n omega. N is nothing but the shifting parameter. If n equal to one, it will shift that side. That side. 
n equal to 2 it will shift twice that side if n equal to plus 1 it will come this side and so on so let me draw the exact picture of this waveform and that will clear everything so just like uh, above say above drawing picture twice fm 2 pi fm then we have the next law then this side we have next law alright this side is minus minus 4 pi fm this point is omega s that side is omega s and on and the reference axis value is omega so on graph will continue as long as up to infinity at uh, when I reference is frequency this will look like we have minus fm here we have plus fm here we have fs here which is sampling frequency fm is the highest frequency content of the signal this is minus 2 fm and so on so what I mean to say that you see here this was the graphical representation of frequency domain representation graph of xt and now you have signal after multiplying the signal with the impulse train you are getting this signal and this is actually nothing but the, the multiple time repetition of itself so the frequency domain representation will look like this one here you can see that uh, if suppose the amplitude of the signal was A, period was TS. A upon TS will be the peak value of this law. They have done this in your classic signal course. A can be the peak amplitude of this thing. Now you see here that uh, the total range is still FM this side, FM this side. This is the first law. Second time when it is repeating itself because of this equation, because of this and when n equal to 1, it will repeat and this will create this part n equal to 2 will create the next part, n equal to plus 1 will create this part, n equal to plus 2 will create this part and so on. Now see, if I want to, this is called the repetition of signal. I have multiplied it with impulse train and now because of that it repeats this factor we are getting this. What do you mean by this? When we are multiplying a signal in time domain with a train of pulses, in frequency spectrum variation will be somewhat like this. If you want to understand the multiplication impact in sense of frequency, in terms of frequency, then this is the case. Now, I will need to decide that uh, what should be the sampling frequency so that I can recover all the signal. Sampling frequency means what, uh, at what, or with which rate I will take samples. At what instance I will take samples so that uh, I will be able to get it back. In this picture, you see here, this distance is fm, this distance is currently it is fs, from here 0 to fs. This is fm, this is again fm, if you are talking about magnitude. So it is all it is twice fm, it is 2 fm. And these laws are symmetrical, so this will be again fm. Or you can say that up from here to this point is also twice fm. Alright? Just recall or just imagine that train pulses. Because of these number of pulses, we are getting multiple laws here. If the position of this pulse will be this side or that side if the position of second or third pulse is changing towards this outwards or inwards it will create or it will change the position of these laws maybe this side or maybe that side and the position of the pulse is actually nothing but the sampling rate because this pulse when it will multiply the poison signal will create a sample so next sample will be after a particular time again that time is nothing but the sampling rate and inverse of that is frequency. So this sampling period will define and this uh, will define the position of these laws. So suppose by somehow we are getting fs exactly at this position, 
which is equal to twice fm. You see here, if fs is equal to twice fm, you are getting complete part of signal. See, if you are starting from here, zero, and this is your signal, and these and these signals are identical. So, zero to this point, half part of signal, first half, and this is second half. So, this second half and this second half is exactly same. So, I can say that between this point and that point, we have first as well as second part of signal. So, if you are sampling, if you are putting our sampling frequency such that we are taking samples at this position, we will get complete signal. What I mean to say that if fs is up to this point, if the value of uh, sampling frequency is this point value, then what will happen? We are able to get complete value, uh, complete signal, or complete part of the spectrum of original signal. If you will move the signal further outward, what will happen? Everything is alright. If you are moving this from that side, from here to that side, if your FS is somewhere here, what will happen? You will get complete first part, you will get complete second part, which is actually this side part, and you will get also some repetition of first part. Isn't it? This part represents first part, you are getting here, if your sampling point is this, you are getting this part, this part is representing this part, identical, so you are getting second part, and this remaining part is what? Repetition of the first part, because again that part is representing the first part only, of original signal. So there is no sense if you are moving that side because you will start repeating this spectrum. So this is the right position. If you are standing here, it is the right position because you are getting exact signal. If you are moving towards inside, towards left hand side, what will happen? The vice versa of that. What will happen? If suppose your FS is somewhere here. If FS is somewhere here. So in that case, what will happen? First part is completely varied, the second part is there, but this time you may lose this part of second part, this much of second part. So the point is that what, what is the what is the meaning of this point is that the second part is here and you may lose this much area of second part because of reduced or decreased position of sampling frequency. Okay, so if you are moving towards inside, you will reduce the signal. If you are moving that side, you will start repeating your spectrum. And this one is the ideal position. And that position is nothing but that position is nothing but what? That is exactly where your signal is completing. Okay? So that position if I want to define, if you see, start from here, 0 to fm, then again fm. This distance is again fm only, because this part is nothing but the second part. So fm plus fm is twice fm, so fs, fs is equal to twice fm. So, if we are keeping fs equal to twice fm, we are exactly able to get complete information of the signal. If we are keeping sampling frequency at twice fm, we are able to get complete information of original signal. Because this part, this plus this, represent original signal spectrum. And mathematically, inverse Fourier transform and inverse transformation techniques are available, tools are available, using which we can deconstruct original signal from its frequency spectrum. And this is nothing but the frequency spectrum of original signal. So you see here, this part is visible in this segment and because we are getting in this condition, in this condition we are getting first plus second part, exactly. So we can recover total information. Because I have rest of the time it is repeating itself. And that, that does not make any sense. Even if you will calculate or convert many things, you will get multiple versions of your original signal. So this much information is enough. Now, if FS is greater than twice fm you will repeat your signal fs is greater than twice fs this condition you will repeat start repeating things so this is all right but you will start repeating things 
third one, third possibility is the FS is less than y sec. So in this case, what will happen? You will lose some information. If FS point is moving towards inside this point, this direction, you will lose that much, that part of second part. That much information of second part. Because you are, you are cutting your information, you are cutting your sample here at this position. Where the sample is completing itself up to this point. So this much part you are going to lose. Because of FS is less than twice FF condition. So this is the ideal position where if you are maintaining the sampling rate, you will be able to get your signal exactly. Whereas this is what a little bit extra freedom is there. In this case, uh, it is not uh, desired condition because in this case we will not be able to recover our information because some part of the spectrum is we are missing so that is the important point here the first condition is called Matthews criteria if we are maintaining this criteria if we are maintaining this criteria we are going to get full spectrum full information there if we are maintaining this it is very enough this, in this condition, we are not going to get any, uh, we are going to lose some information. So, meaningless, thorough. So, to uh, get or uh, to recover the original signal from uh, discrete format or converted, uh, uh, I mean to say that to recover the original signal from discrete version, we need to maintain this criteria at least. This is minimum condition. Otherwise, this is the safe side condition. Now, you see, to get the original signal from this position, from this position, we need sharp filters. Means what? Let me make it clear, more visible. Just, okay. So, so if suppose I want to find out, I want to filter out this much part of the spectrum because that will present complete information. First plus second is a complete picture. So if I want to take it out from here, I need a filter. Filter you understand a circuit or a system which can filter out desired frequencies. I mean all you can see that we can exclude unwanted frequencies from that. So this part if we can filter out, if we can filter out this much part of spectrum, we will be able to recover original information, original signal. But you see here, we need a filter whose response is exactly sharp like this, which is actually very almost impossible to design a filter with such a sharp response, ideal response. If you know, if you remember last class, or last semesters, this kind of response is for ideal filter. Normally, the response of filter will be like this. At uh, corners, it will be like this. It will not be like directly one to zero. It will gradually, it will increase to the small values. So we need an ideal filter for this condition which is not possible. For practical condition we can have this kind of. What I mean to say that we can pass it from a filter whose response is somewhat like this and somewhat like this. So if filter response is like this, this filter response is creating problem for the next spectrum part. This side and that side. So what should be the better or ideal condition that my next spectrum or my next value of next signal should start from with some gap. Okay? I will draw it again so that you can understand this fine concept. If this is the first part of the spectrum, if I am starting exactly here and I am starting exactly here, I need a filter like this, which can cut signal exactly. Ideal filter, which is not possible practically. Okay, so far. So what happens? My filter response will be like this. It will create problem for the this part of the spectrum. So what I need is that if suppose somehow, somehow my next sample is starting after this position and that position. So the sample is what the sampling frequency fs is now. This is fm. That side is fm. So sampling frequency fs is greater than greater than 2 fm. This part is greater than. So now I have a scope for my filter characteristics. My filter's inefficiency. I have a scope here. 
And that inefficiency we can manage using the positioning or more wide positioning of samples. Okay? And that makes the condition appears in greater than 5 seconds. So this is the real time condition which is actually we should apply always. Ideally, mathematically on paper we can say fm should be equal to twice fm, but practically we should apply fs is greater than twice fm. Alright? So this is the condition fm should be greater than twice fm. To recover the original signal, we need to maintain that. It is now understood, it is visible to us. We will solve the numerical on this problem and we will close session for today. Uh, suppose uh, I have a signal like uh, 2 cos 150 pi t plus 3 cos 200 pi t. Find out the sampling frequency so that we can reconstruct all the signal. So what, because this is a composite signal, this is first part, that is second part. So the first part is what 150 pi t. You compare it with 2 pi f1, first part, so I am writing f1. So f1 is equal to nothing but 75. Whereas in case of second part, you see here, it's very simple calculation, I am going first. So it, you, if you will compare with uh, this side, I am writing 2 for the second part. So f2 is equal to, is equal to 100. So f1 is equal to 75, f2 is equal to 100. Fm is nothing but the max part of frequency. As per the definition for reconstruction, the condition is this one. Fm is the highest frequency component of the band limited signal. Here the highest frequency component is what? 100. That is F2. So in this case, Fm is equal to F2 which is actually 100. So you see here, Fs is greater than or equal to 100. This is our answer. Now the original thing is what? It should be greater than twice of fm. Twice of fm. So what I can say here, fm should be greater than equal to at least 200. So that we can recover original information from sample version of this signal. So the sampling, appropriate sampling frequency for this problem is uh, 200. Hertz, obviously. Alright. Whenever you are getting numerical, you can solve it like this to find out the sampling frequency. Sometimes we may have the problems like in a different format. Like you have cos 40 pi t cos 80 pi t. Suppose this is the problem given to us. What will be the appropriate sampling accurate or exact sampling frequency for this signal? So it is what 2 cos a cos A, cos B, so that is equal to nothing but uh, cos of A plus B plus cos of A minus B. Apply this formula in this equation, you will get cos of 120 by T plus cos of 40 by T. From this side, you will find 120 pi is equal to what? 2 pi f1. Whereas that side you will find 40 pi is equal to 2 pi f2. So from here f1 is equal to 16. f2 is equal to 20. So now what should be the sampling frequency? It should be greater than or equal to twice fm. So, fs should be equal to greater than twice of fm. What is fm here? That is 60. So, it is 2 into 60. So, it is fs should be greater than or equal to 120. Okay. So, uh, in this way we can solve the problems on sampling. We have uh, done the basic introduction to the basic Nyquist criteria, sampling theorem. In uh, coming classes, uh, we will cover entire things about uh, different kinds of sampling process methods. And uh, there are varieties in sampling, even many uh, variants of sampling theorem is available. Uh, 
different kind of methods are there in this case so we will complain, complete in that part in coming class uh, we have 5 more minutes in this case I will uh, I would like to discuss uh, shifting a uh, shift shift invariant property of LTI system how to test whether a system is shift variant or shift invariant what I mean to say that a system is still behaving same in, as it was behaving earlier I mean to say that if a system yn is equal to given here yn equal to xn plus xn minus 1 if suppose this is the current position of current characteristics of system after k time still the system is behaving like this only then system is shift invariant after some time there system is still behaving same as it was before some time the same time there the system is known as a shift invariant otherwise it is known as a shift variant to test this what we have to do I will just explain the states of process first state in entire system you apply delayed signal delayed signal to input of system instead of xn you apply xn minus 1 you suppose you are getting migration in second case you have available output of the system you delay that output and if it is that delayed output is equal to the what you was getting after application of delayed input then system is shift invariant let me solve it when I come on this equation first step system is given equal to yn equal to xn plus xn minus 1 a very more simple this is a system suppose so first case delayed input so delayed input will is what xn minus 1 so it will introduce simply wherever there is a n right and minus 1 so the case number 1 when we are delaying the input the response is y n minus 1 case number 2 we will delay the available output now output is what y n we will delay this output if we will delay this output it will become y n minus 1 which is actually equal to the previous case in first case we have delayed the input so we are getting this one in second case we are delaying the available output so we are getting this one and you see we both values are same so system is shift invariant ok first case second case if suppose in instead of xn you have an xn now in this case the first case you delay the input signal so delay the input signal means what in instead of xn you will write xn minus 1 so the signal is what n x n minus 1 Okay, we are delaying the input signal so what you will get in this case you will get y of n minus 1 alright in second case when you will delay the output this is your output which is equal to n, x n, n of xn so if you will delay the output it will become second case if you are delaying the output n minus k version then you will get n minus 1 also n minus 1 compare these two values after delaying output the signal is like this if we are delaying only input the signal is like this these are not same so it is now it is shaped variant so because of this end system is becoming shift variant if it is not there system is shift invariant so whenever you have any time factor in multiplication system will be considered as a shift variant otherwise it should be